I have been unmuted and I have no cloth. Do I have a cloth? Do I have a cloth? That is a bloody good idea. I'll have to use that one. This thing, I don't know. Am I live? Hard to tell whether I'm live or not because this machine is a bit, a bit flaky. Ah, how you doing, Miles? Right, okay, so I am uh, live. Really is hard to tell. I can't see myself on the, uh, on the screen at all. Yeah, there you see. It's halting. Can I stop that? Just bear with me for a, a, a moment until I appear. You, but you can hear me, but you can't see me. Is that right? Um, would you mind sort of just writing in the chat if you can uh, hear me? It'd be very helpful. Yeah. That. Outside rather. Noise, noise, noise. Yeah, I don't know what it is. I up upgraded to um, to the Vodafone. Supposedly, listen to that. Just bear with me. It'll be another. It'll be another minute before it uh, this thing sort of settles down. I think. It's no good, it's not fit for purpose, really. So uh, you can hear me, yeah, okay. I'm gonna have to go back, back to, I, I think I was a bit of a fool and I signed up for a, a year of this Vodafone business. It's not great, I have to say. Project, how are you doing? Yes, I didn't see you there. I was kind of uh, yeah, staring at the wrong. Yeah, technology, yeah. I suppose I wouldn't be able to do this at all if it wasn't for computers, but they're not all they're cracked up to be. That's for sure. Or they're lying to us. See, you can pro you can probably hear that racket, can you? Every um, it keeps freezing on me. It's weird. I'm connected by a direct line to supposed uh, fiber technology, uh, to a fiber connection, and it's worse than it was with the uh, the, the old system. Uh, just bear with me. Bear with me. It's still trying to start. There's, it does this kind of intro where it counts down and there's a, a countdown screen and and then I appear as, as if by magic. Only you'd be fed up waiting for for this to to start. Let me know when you can see me because um, hopefully this will work. Now. Let's have a look, put that down there like that, it's fine. Three seconds to go, it says. This is about two, two minutes ago. Let me just, I'm preparing while I'm, I'm waiting to, to go in. Yeah, it's frozen still, frozen, terrible. Who else is here? Oh, you can see me, but I'm frozen. Desperate. Desperate. Okay. Can you hear me? This is going to turn into a radio broadcast, isn't it? Okay, so it's supposedly, uh, for me now, it's, it's just sh about to show my face. Uh, right. I can see myself on the screen now, so I'm hoping that you can see me. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't know what to do about this. Well, look, uh, yeah, sorry about yesterday. <clears throat> I see there are three of you here. There's somebody. There's a mystery person in here as well. Um, yesterday, I, I got kind of double booked with a, a friend that I hadn't seen in years, and uh, we decided to go and see a new film that's been made about uh, the pub that we used to go in in Dublin over for many years, and uh, particularly for him, he's a bit older than me, and uh, we used to play music there. And he used to dance there a lot, and uh, he was uh, called Hughes's. And uh, a famous actor, Brendan Gleeson, uh, who you may have seen in The Banshees of Inisherin and, and uh, Harry Potter and all that, he, he's, um, he's a local guy. He made this uh, tribute to the pub, and we went to see it. And uh, it was, it was a, 
it's a lovely little film, but I think you, it's a very niche interest, uh, and uh, you know you'd you'd have to you'd have to know the place in order to get much out of the film, I suppose. But fair play to him for making it. it must have uh, cost him a packet to put together anyway. And then uh, we had a nice Korean meal and, uh, and off to another music pub to, to have a pint. Uh, yeah, and so that's why I couldn't do yesterday's, um, or the usual thing yesterday. So, um, on to painting. Have you been doing much painting uh, yourselves over the week? Let me know in the comments. Uh, it's, it's interesting to know what you're painting and, and how often you are painting. Because obviously the more you paint, uh, the better, uh, or the more quickly, more quickly you'll get better. It's the way I, I found it for myself anyway. Uh, let me have a look at the design. Um, I know that the quality of these things isn't great. Uh, mostly it seems because of the, um, the lack of broadband. It, uh, but let me just put in this, you see, all right? This, I'm, this will show when the, this uh, video is recorded. And by that time, I'll have a link in the description uh, underneath the video to... Uh, a painting course. I've got a basic painting course uh, on a, a, a teaching site called Thinkific, and uh, but the link will be below. There's no point in having a look for it now because uh, it's not there yet. But um, yeah, so I start off, and you know, I was talking about painting every day. Uh, my painting uh, teaching practice grew out of the daily painting movement. So uh, painting a very small painting, like almost postcard size, uh, every day, uh, and. Uh, and I based my my um, my little basic painting course on that. So it's about seven hours of video and some supporting um, written material, uh, and then uh, I, I'll do a a live uh, exclusive uh, uh, workshop with people. Sort of uh, every, every month, once a month is the is the intended. So it's only brand new. So uh, anyway, so w when you come back and look at the video, uh, you'll see it there. Uh, right, so, and I'll show you, I'll take that off now, hang on, there's no point in having it there all the time. <clears throat> Put that one back on. Um, go back into chat. Yeah, and I'll show you, right, okay. Okay, we, yeah. Which one did you go to? Which uh, art shop did you go to, uh, Miles? The best one is Evans. Uh, followed by Kennedy's, then we've got all the rest like Art Mines and stuff. I find Art Mines very expensive. But anyway, Evans is very good. It's my favourite one uh, locally. And uh, Project, you did a, a couple of 12 by 12s. Great. Yeah, it's, it's, it's nice to uh, I mean, it's nice to see that. I'll tell you what I decided during the week as well. I, 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 I was looking at um, a lot of abstracts and uh, I, I really do love looking at abstracts yet when i try to do an abstract myself i always kind of find it i kind of find it uh how would you say i feel quite fraudulent doing it because i'm just sort of splashing paint around and messing around and there should be more to it than that um it's just that it's not my thing so i, I just feel odd oh truro museum i keep forgetting where everyone is yeah okay yeah isn't it wonderful to go into an art shop and just spend some time walking around looking at all the things that uh, you'd love to buy? Yeah, absolutely. I could spend uh, hours in, in art shops wishing uh, wishing myself all these goodies. Um, yeah, yeah, abstracts. So I am going to try uh, abstracts because I think a lot of the, the impressionists, the post-impressionists, the, you know, and some of the moderns, and, and the, they were all going towards, they were leading towards uh, abstraction anyway. And that brings me to today's uh, project. Okay, so what, let me just uh, tap on this. And what I've been uh, teaching all week, because I usually choose a, an image, and I've got three classes, and I, I use the same image, same image across the three classes, is this one. Oh, there, that one there. And that is a, it was obviously a windmill in uh, Holland. You see how flat it is. Holland's a very flat country. And so uh, I chose it because, you know, one of my favorite artists, uh, uh, Vincent van Gogh is uh, from Holland and it must have influenced his uh, style of painting. 
because uh, these things seep into your into your consciousness, don't they? So let me see. Yeah, so that's what I'm going to paint today. Now, the the another problem is is running because I've got uh, three cameras running. I've got two cameras running, and it seemed to be able to do it last uh, time I used it, but uh, it was sucking all the power away to have a third camera. So I've got two cameras. One is on me, uh, one is on the, the painting, and then there's this image of the windmill uh, showing. Um, let me just go back to me. Uh, so I'm just going to have the, the camera on the work. Uh, and I'll show you the colours that I'm using are pretty much the usual ones within one addition. So I'm using these Griffin Alkids. They're very nice, uh, nice paints to use and they dry pretty m much more quickly than the, the regular oils. Uh, so cadmium yellow pale hue, um, permanent rose, uh, in this case, French ultramarine rather than cobalt blue. That's a departure for this uh, this painting. And I've added uh, dioxazine purple, just for, because I want this to be a bright, colourful painting. Because I did say that I was going to sort of uh, try the, um, the fauvist approach. Um, it's going to be a kind of a mixture between fauvism and uh, um, uh, and kind of post-impressionism, like Van Gogh. So we we'll see. So all the wrong colours, but uh, I'm going to be very dabby. And uh, that's burnt sienna, so I've got that. Okay. Yes, it's a nice composition, isn't it, Project? Because um, it's reasonably simple. Uh, there isn't too much, and you could leave a lot out and still understand what the painting is supposed to be, which is a kind of a step towards abstraction, I suppose, in a way, isn't it? So, look, I'll begin. Uh, let me just tap on this... Uh, Make sure I'm ready to go. Uh, right, so here, if you just see, let's put my hand here, just for colour. It's slightly washed out, okay, so uh, you'll just have to, um, you just have to sort of bear with it, I suppose. Now, the, the wash I put on is actually a mixture of permanent rose and uh, yellow. You see up here, there's uh, quite a lot of light and it gets slightly darker down here. That's probably what's causing the washing out. It's the position of the lights, but I can't. Can I move this around and make it a little better? That's not. That's not. That's not too bad there. Let me just turn down the lights. The brightness down. Oh yeah, yeah. That's getting a bit, bit better. You can see more, like it actually is supposed to be. I'm just sort of uh, turning the light down. That's more like it. We'll see how that works. Okay, so you're going to have to bear with me. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll switch back to the, um, the reference once in a while, okay? So, but I've painted this three times, or f four times this week, actually. So, I'm going to... Do you remember I usually um, draw out my things in Burnt Sienna? It's my go-to colour for washes and... Uh, and drawing, but I'm not going to do that this time. I'm going to use uh, blue, I think. I'm just going to use straight blue, okay? And come across here, give myself a bit of room for the sky. And always when you're, I'm painting a, a landscape from a photograph, I try to, I, I try to make it so that it, it seems that I was actually there. If you understand, so uh, if you're standing in a field looking at this scene, you're going to have to um, you know, deal with whatever conditions you've you've got. For example, you know, uh, midges flying around your head while you're painting, or you forgot your um, you forgot your what would you say? You know, you forgot one of the colours, or you forgot your water, or, or you, you you made lunch for yourself and didn't bring it, uh, and so you've got all these things kind of mitigating mitigating against you uh, painting properly and you've just got to cope with them. A, a large amount of painting is about coping and if you're just sit sitting in the studio painting a um, uh, painting a, a scene from a photograph you just tend to take your time and start you being dragged down the uh, the road of copying 
you know, a tracing almost, and it, it doesn't help. It doesn't help your paintings. I'm going to move that over a bit, actually. I'm going to move it over one whole house there. Say that's the house there. Uh, and then there's some trees there. So you've got to be quick, in other words. Uh, let's go back to the windmill. Make a bit more substantial around there like that. Uh, the sail emanates from around there. And I, I've got to make that agree. So that really is a right angle. It's got to be a, a right angle there. So I'm making it slightly more pitched than the uh, than the one in the photograph because uh, because I want it to be. Well, that's more exciting that way. Okay, and we get, there's a barn here, for example. Uh, vegetation across the back of the hills there, like that. There's a path. There's a green park coming up here like that. Then there's a path. And then there's the, the field. And that's fine. I'm not going to stop marking that um, fence now because that's uh, it's not a detail that I'm particularly worried about getting uh, perfectly right. Okay, so, and then there are some other, I'm just going to mark those in because I want to make sure I don't forget them. Uh, so, and that there is all there's a roof there, is all vegetation there, all very flat, flat lands. And then there's uh, something going along there. You can see sort of divisions of the fields up there like that. Okay, those can be all put in later. And then the rest of it is just, uh, it's the sky, isn't it? Yeah, that's enough. And I just got to make sure I've I know that that is all sort of scrub, scrubby bushes along there. Okay. Now, the, the, when I was uh, teaching this during the week, you know, because I'm under pressure when I'm uh, when I'm painting in front of people, and so I don't notice everything. And then you know, I wouldn't want to put in everything anyway. So um, you now, one of my students said, "Oh, are you going to put in the combine harvester?" I said, "Where the bloody hell's the combine harvester? I couldn't see it." Let me just, uh, let's see, up here, there, there, just to the left of the house underneath those uh, bushes on the horizon, there is a combine harvester, in fact. There's also a car, and there are some sheep in the field. None of it uh, are details that I want to put in. So, all I want is the house, the, the windmill, and the, the surrounding countryside, and that barn. Okay? So... So this is it. Remember when I said I was going to paint a Fovis painting? Uh, you simplify, really, just uh, uh, simplify until you, you can simplify no more. Let's have a look. So I'm going to start out, I think, with some of the darks. Okay, well, what should be darks? And I'm going to put those in uh, in just blue. I was going to push that in there like that, uh, and then the roof there like that. Uh, I'm, I'm putting the paint in thinly because uh, I don't want it to affect the subsequent coats uh, too much. Okay, and that's there. But I don't want to paint in the in the right colours. I, I don't want to get sucked in the into the into the way of painting the thing accurately. You know, in the, in the accurate colours, because then I'll, I'll I'll just sort of go off down the road of of. Um, uh, veracity and I don't want to do that. Right, so so we've got green fields, don't we? So let's do some green fields then. Fovis style. It's a bit of an adventure, um, I, I find, when you're, when you're painting like this. You've got to treat it as such because all you're doing really is telling a story. When you're painting from um, reality, when you're standing there, um, it's it's even the same thing. You you've got to somehow relate to, um, well, to yourself, I suppose, or to the fictional person you have in your head. That that uh, this is the story of of this outing uh, of painting, rather than this is the this is my attempt at uh, reality. 
So if the story is, for example, you know, sort of by the Mediterranean, it's a story of kind of searing heat, isn't it? And, uh, and that kind of thing. So we've got that. Now, sky. Let us do something uh, about the blue sky. Mm -hmm. Let's try that. bit more yellow into that. So, I mean, what I do, uh, I, I don't know if this is what the, the, the actual Fovis, you know, Matisse and uh, all that crowd, uh, I mean, I couldn't say for sure what they were thinking when they started their paintings, but I'm, uh, I'm pretty sure that it, it's probably uh, the fact that they did it wrong in the wrong colours, in order to uh, force themselves to to make an interesting, different kind of painting. Okay, so we've got something. There's a, still a, a a bright light on that top left-hand corner. I'm just moving that light around. Will that work? Yeah, that's a bit better there. Is that better? Um, okay. Oh God, it's gone very dark here now. <laughs> right. All right, but we'll, I'll live with it. So, and but some of the things still apply uh, to a normal uh, painting. For example, I'm still blocking in. That's the same thing uh, uh, as in any painting, that you do the blocks in, in the general colour that you want, and then you start putting in details or, or whatever. And also, the other thing is, is that this is water, and that is sky, and I still want... Uh, I still want the viewer to see that that is water and that is sky. And the way to do that is to repeat this here. Okay, so uh, that has to agree with the top part. So that can go in there like that as well. Uh, what can we do with that path? Hmm. Let's put in a path there in yellow. Okay, and what do we have down at the bottom? I do like that, uh, the fact that the pink is showing through, but it'd probably be better to do more of an orange in places. We can mix it in there. And the other thing is, with me, I don't know about you, but every time I start a painting, it almost never turns out the way that I, I had envisaged or planned, you know, to, for the thing to, to turn out. But, uh, you know, that's kind of a good thing in a way because it's, it makes it more like playing. Okay, let's put some, uh, some brights down there as well. Some bright yellow. Because I, I still want the sky to sort of uh, lighten towards the horizon. Okay. For all that, though, I mean, I, I don't think I'd have made a great um, uh, uh, Fovist. They'd probably have kicked me out of the of the Fovists union because um, I still can't sort of uh, uh, divorce myself from uh, reality. <laughs> I'm trying. I'm trying my best. No. Now. What else can I do? Sort of some excitement. So I can I can sort of build into those uh, those blocks now. Let's try some oranges. See what we can make of this. That's there. Those can be there. Put. Uh, Oh yes, I need some uh, an orangey colour to reflect there. That will do. Now let's go around that windmill. I can always put in the details of that windmill later on. So I'm going to go back to the 
all the uh, uh, vegetation, you know, the uh, the house and the and the trees and stuff like that. So I can start sort of uh, firming those up. So I think I'm going to grab some blue. I'm going to get some purple actually, purple. Yeah, just put a bit of white into the dioxazine purple, and describe some darks in there. There, like that. And that's the house there, so I've got to make sure. Put a little bit of house shape there, there, there. And then it comes down. There's another roof there. Comes down there. And that is all vegetation. And that can be described there. Some a linking hedge there, there. Some so after that, that the house or the barn here. I like in the countryside you've got those um, sinking roofs, and that's a modern barn. It, it's not very attractive, so let's put that in there like that. And um, we've got to come down a little bit to. I'm, I'm still sort of thinking. Um, in, in naturalistic terms, in the sense of of um, color temperature, it's very important that um, you know to, to actually be aware of color temperature. I think, uh, and so I'm using cool colors for the cool areas. Now, the purple is a kind of a, a, a cool a cool color, and so in the shadowed areas. Is where I'm, I'm putting these uh, cool purples. Uh, permanent rose itself is is cold until you put uh, until you put um, yellow into it. So let's try some permanent rose, but with white in it. So it's still it's a cold pink, and I'm going to put in some cold pinks to, to describe kind of the grassy area. To help describe it, oh Xavier, yo. oh have I got? Is it just me? Hang on, just let me read these. Till it gets a still image that changes every couple of minutes. Mm, it is very annoying. I'm so sorry about that. But there doesn't seem to be anything I can do about it. Uh, ah, it's most frustrating. Yeah putting in some pinks in here. Okay, uh, so that's cold along there. Um, and also some uh, green, just pure yellow and and per and ultramarine. That will give me a cold green until I put um, red into it. So let's keep, I'm going to put in some of that. Because I'm, I'm not only working from dark to light in this painting, I'm working from um, cold to warm. So let's put in a big green roof. We've got red roof there, got a red roof there. And then a bit of green in there and there. Let's delineate that. I do a nice sort of colour along there. Okay. The side of the house can be like that. And then underneath the um, the the uh, I don't know what you call it, the carapace of the uh, of the windmill is like that and maybe oh I'll tell you what it's the dome of that windmill there put that in there like that all the wrong colors remember we've got the red roof of the uh, of the barn on the right 
put that and kind of using the opposite uh, colors than are actually supposed to be there. Um, let's do some more with the horizon there. Push that around there. And now just as I would start to describe uh, all the grassy areas in a realistic, um, a more realistic uh, style of painting, uh, I'd start putting a bit of red in the grass. I'm going to do the opposite uh, thing around here and to put a warm green, so um, ultramarine, uh, cadmium yellow pale hue and a bit of red to warm it up, a bit more yellow, make it a warm kind of russet green so I can put in some, at least some references to grass colour in there. Same in this part as well. In there like that. It's, you know, how far away from reality can you get it and still figure out what's actually going on? That Maybe that's the, the sort of way of looking at it. Put it up there like that. Because I don't paint like this uh, at all normally. Okay, so let's uh, describe some more in those bushes. Um, let me put in, well, what was I going to do? Oh yes, it was a deep red, but a warm deep red. Uh, so yellow and uh, permanent rose. And I can describe the the details of you know of these the wall the, where the light is hitting the the foliage and in here it's an exciting way of painting i suppose yeah because it, you 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 no longer have to sort of worry about the photograph i don't know whether any of you are worrying about the photograph i mean <laughs> You know, I, I like many of, uh, of my students, uh, I can get caught up in the details. And uh, it's, if you depart deliberately from them, it, it sort of, it kind of helps. Let's put some, um, let's put some purpley blues in the grass too. Because what we're doing is just describing grass, so a few little sort of... Uh, dabs and lines around the place will sort of help it along. Uh, that's my excuse and I'm sticking to it. There and then so along there. Now let's uh, do the sails of the uh, of the windmill. Okay so what we've got, uh, they, they, they have the, the sail part is kind of a, it's a mix between the, the actual dark and the sky, which is a greeny yellow. So I'm just going to mix that up, make a light mix of the two of them. So it's kind of a hmm, a bit too grey, I think. Maybe a very light blue. Let's have a look. Put that in. Okay, so here we go. If I put, there's one sail there. One sail there. Just leaving a bit of um, leaving a bit of uh, of the sort of solid part of the sail visible one there. You can't really see the one at the front. Okay, so let's put in a light to the right hand side of the because the light is hitting the windmill here. Okay, I'm going to put in some darks for the windows and doors. I'm not going to be uh, very descriptive. There's one, one there, one there, one there. And now I can start sort of, um, I think I need, need to put out a little bit more yellow.
I think from this position, I can, I can start refining it. Now, the Fauvists, they wouldn't have done much refining. They would leave things and, uh, uh, you know, v practically half, half done. It's Some obvious strokes, I think that, that, that doesn't go amiss. You know, you leave your brushwork in. Don't flatten things out. And don't, um, don't, how would you say, don't uh, um, worry your, your brush strokes after putting them down. You get more lively paintings that way, I think. Let's put it out there like that. I have just spilled my um, my terps. Hi, hi, hi! Right, I've still got enough to work with. Now, where am I? Let's lighten up and and warm up. This is the other thing: is that it's still an alla prima painting in the sense that um, you're blocking in and then working towards. Uh, working towards the light um, so you in other words you bounce around bringing the entire painting to uh, to you know to realization as much at the same time as you possibly can so you don't just work on one specific area uh, to you know to the exclusion of all the other areas and then move on. It, uh, you, you might get called away, or you might never finish the painting. And but um, the thing is, with alla prima paintings, if you do the whole thing at once, then uh, you'll always have a painting, even if it's uh, uh, just gone beyond the blocking in stage. So it's a more enjoyable, more satisfying way of painting, I think. Let's put in the windows up here. One, two, three. We can go in there like that. Let's do some clouds. I'll put them in a light green. Yeah. So lots of uh, yellow, white, and a bit of blue. Uh, Remember when, you, when you're painting like a, a Fauvist, the Fauvists were, uh, they were called the wild beasts. I don't know who called them the wild beasts, must probably the, uh, the critics, the ac academy or whatever. And uh, whether they enjoyed being called the wild beasts, maybe they did. You know. But um, so you can paint kind of wildly, I suppose. But show your brush, brush strokes. It's uh, one of the joys of painting, I think, is texture and, and brushwork. That's too dark there in the middle. So let me get some. Push that there. I still like things to be squared off. <laughs> Right, now I'm going to start sort of um, delineating things. It's quite garish on the, uh, on the screen. It doesn't look garish to me, but partially because I'm working in half light here. But I'm going to sort of start delineating things. I think it's... Uh, it's, a, it's a, I think it's a nice way of working it. Push those around a bit. Is that push that tree up because it, it looks a bit lost there. Uh, it's quite child childish, childlike uh, uh, way of painting. And aren't we all supposed to be sort of um, searching for our inner child in painting? So let's get some more of that purple and. I'm not paying attention to details. That's the thing. So.
it's actually the sort of the vibrations between the colours are the important thing, more than uh, more than the accuracy and the immediacy of, of, of painting. I could come down a little lighter uh, towards the horizon, so let me just add a bit more white to my orangey colour. I think that helps, that's nice, yeah. Also, there's a lot of texture on here. There's, there's quite a bit of paint. Uh, for me, who, who doesn't sort of, uh, I don't generally speaking sort of do impasto style uh, painting, but uh, for me, it's uh, a lot of paint. You can see, you can see the edges of the strokes, if you see what I mean, raised edges. How am I doing for time, I wonder? So 10 past seven, I'm, I think I started at half six, no, yeah, so what, 40 minutes so far, and some of it was me blabbing on, so yeah, I'm not doing too badly. I don't like those dark areas in the, uh, in the sky. So I'm gonna go to my orange, put that in there as well. Obliterate those uh, dark areas, don't like them. Um, where was I, oh yeah. It makes the sky seem a bit more stormy than uh, it does in the photograph. That's good because that is a very dull sky, I think, in the photograph. Let me just remind you. Okay. Childlike painting seems so pure. It is. They've no fear, do they? And we, we get to adult, adulthood and we've kind of lost this ability to just sit down with a bunch of colours and put down our favourite ones. Which is why I kind of uh, started, I've started becoming interested in abstraction. I, mean, I don't think I'll ever be a, an abstract painter. Well, maybe I will, I don't know. See, I dragged my, my cuff across the painting there. Now, just come across there like that. I told you it was going to be a kind of a mixture between the, <laughs> the um, post-impressionists and the... Uh, and the Fauvists, I'm doing all this kind of Van Gogh like dabbing here I could, because I like it. Is Ivor in? Oh, how are you doing, uh, uh, Ivor? Let me just, you're welcome to, welcome to the, this happy crew again. Yeah. Yeah, okay, there. Oh, what am I gonna do? What am I gonna do with that um, windmill? Do you know what I'd like to do? I'd like to get a bit of a kind of a bluish colour, kind of bluey grey, and just delineate that. Don't know why. I think it, it looks neat. I'm going to restate the um, the blades or the leading edges of these uh, blades there. So now you kind of, you know it's a windmill. It's, uh, that's all it has to say. And that's the way a child would uh, uh, describe a windmill. Uh, you know, they, they, they just stick four, <laughs> four lines on it and say, yep, that's the windmill. Uh, Gotta go back into the sky because I want more, I want loads of uh, paint on this uh, painting because I think it, it's nice. And do you know what? Because I can be quite sort of, um, uh, how would you say, close with a dollar with paints. <laughs> and, uh, you know, because, you know, you buy expensive paints and you think, oh, no, I've got to make something great with this. And, uh, but really, there is a joy in uh, um, just using lots of paint. I'm kind of enjoying this more than the ones that I'm doing in the, in the, in the class because I don't know why. I suppose because no one's actually sort of sitting behind me. You know, I can make believe that uh, I'm on my own a bit. Weird. So, uh, what? Yeah, I, do you know what? Uh, now I'm getting into the stage where I can, I can mess. 
because I know that the painting is there and what I do from now on is basically gratuitous. You know, I th if I was uh, if I was Vincent Van Gogh now, I'd be I'd be attacking the painting with um, tubes, not even using a brush paint, maybe. So let's have a look. What's going on here? A bit more red in that, I think. Fill up that area there. I like that. Push that as if there's vegetarian vegetation there. Yeah, that's nice, and I think some um, light, lightish blues would be nice. Just sort of um, ultramarine with a bit of white in it. See what that does. I think that kind of bounces off the the other colours quite nicely. Uh, and thank you for suggesting this, Miles. It, it's uh, it, it, it's been really enjoyable. I like to be pushed, you know, as well. Let's uh, put some dots in there, if there's... Now, what I do need to do is actually reflect that sky a bit better in the water. But believe it or not, we're actually not far off The end there, so if I, if I can sort of put those in there, it, it, the water becomes just that bit more believable. Oh, the fence. You weren't going to tell me, were you? So I'm going to grab some, um, uh, grab some purple. And then I'm going to put one post there. I'm going to do this the way a child would do it as well, I suppose. Just uh, First of all, I'm going to describe the top, and it comes across there like that as it crosses the path. Uh, that really is just not complete as a line. And then I'm going to put that one there. And probably best not to be uh, accurate. If you see what I mean, not not to sort of start describing every single one, and just put them down uh, as you see fit, in in a kind of a bit of a bockety way. You know what they say here is, uh, they, in in Ireland they say the things are bockety when they mean a sort of um, skewed or. So I'll use that it's a nice terminology there. Let's put it in that there, and I didn't delineate that. Um, didn't delineate that roof there because that is a roof too. A few more delineations, put a little dot there. Oh yes, it's, it's maybe just describe some of the hedges, just because it kind of needs it, I think. There's a hedge going off there. Maybe we can sort of separate that here we're going up to the, the I think you called it a lighthouse, the windmill. Bit of a dark there. Isn't it uh, uh, Picasso that said it took me seven years to paint like uh, Raphael and the rest of my life to paint like a child? Uh, let me just grab that and shove it down there. Put that in there, and I think I'll lighten up those wind, those skylights there. And I think that I'll call that one a day. So what I usually do at this point is un tape it because I'm painting on um, on canvas textured oil painting paper. Okay, if you must know, and let me grab that. Yeah, like that. I always think it's kind of nice as a reveal. It almost like uh, it's like it gives the painting a frame. And what I'll do is I'll bring it around to the front camera and and show you from there. Maybe the colour will be a bit better. So let's have a look. 
have to wipe the spilled turps there from in front of me and let me grab this and this and take the this painting and put it there like that. No, whether the colour's any better. This is a very dull camera, isn't it? Oh well. So uh, if I can go forward. When when this gets recorded properly, I mean, I'm trying to sort of move it in so without. When this gets re uh, recorded, it'll become a kind of a, a video on my, um, you know, on my channel. By then, I'll, I'll have a, a a scan of it. And you can see the thing. Uh, I'm sorry about the quality of this. I, I, I wish I knew how to uh, to fix this issue, uh, but uh, that's that's all I can do. So, if any any sort of comments or, or questions, it'd be very interesting to hear them. Because I do sort of blather on while I'm painting, but um, you know, I might not always be making sense. I have to wipe this down. Uh, Miles, thank you very much. Yeah. Is there any questions? It's really nice to, to, to actually talk. Yeah, please do uh, ask. Uh, let me. Uh, yeah, go on, Ivor. Ask away. I hope I can answer it. I'll just um, wait for Ivor to tap out a, um, a technical question. You can all have a go. Like I mean, if you just put the put a question up or a, a comment, I can read them out. Um, let me show on stream. This is what I wrote. There you go. Can I ask a technical question? <laughs> yeah. Okay, three. I used. Let me. I think I used three. Yeah. Uh, where's that? No, I used four. Okay, so this is what I used. Okay, so there's that one there. That's that's about an inch. Okay, and that's uh, um, a flat, bright, a short flat bright. That, that's called. Okay, it's short because of the handle length. Uh, it's flat because it's like a chisel and and, uh, and bright. Okay, why do they call it bright? It's like a chisel. Uh, this is a short flat bright as well, and that's about um, a quarter of an inch. That one. This one's a, a, a. I mean, it says six on it. It says five on it actually, but that's a round. So that would be like a cross. Would be about three three millimeters, or you know, what, an eighth of an inch, something like that. And this one is a number one. So. I don't know what the one refers to. It's not one millimeter, but you know, it's it's kind of like a detailing brush. But the size I paint, you know, these are useful, especially for for delineating things and you know, putting lines around. So I use four brushes. Normally, I'd probably get away with three. Okay. So ah, here we go. So let me uh, let me hide that one, and then show that one in stream. Okay. I use can canvas paper and when I frame it with the tape, the surface of the paper rips when the painting's fit. Yeah, it does. Uh, so, uh, today's painting, I, I use that stuff and that is, that's called ultra tape. But what it is, is um, a painter and decorator's low tack uh, tape. So it doesn't, I wonder what you're actually using. Is it that kind of manila coloured stuff, that light kind of off-white stuff? Because that definitely takes the surface off. You've got to still be careful with this. Uh, but I also have this one as well. And this one is frog. Frog tape is the best one. I can't remember which colour. I think it's the green one. There are some that are lower tack than the others, and uh, they they work really well. But still, be careful taking off the paint. So I always rip off. You know when you've got a. Let me see. Let me see if I can demonstrate here. I've got a bit of wood here. Say, for instance, that was the. Uh, 
So for instance, that was, it was not very easy to see it, but there's the tape there. Okay, so, and say that this, this is your um, canvas. I always grab the, I grab the edge of the tape, the end that I want to pull off, and I pull it away at 90 degrees from the rest of it. So I pull off down like that. Can I do it again? Like, like, like that. And that, that's kind of a, uh, it seems to take the, uh, it seems to rip less. You know, the surface of the paper seems to rip it off less. And sometimes if, if it's not coming away easily, I play a hairdryer over it and that kind of just softens the, uh, the adhesive. Uh, okay, does that help? I hope it does. So frog tape is, is the stuff. Now frog tape over here costs about 10 euros per roll. And I always go to this, uh, what they call a pound shop here. I don't know, uh, they, they, they sell a, from a needle to an anchor and uh, often at cheap prices. And they have a version which I uh, often use. It's not frog, it's some sort of uh, kind of copy of it and it's half the price. But you have to search around. And maybe you could probably get it off uh, Amazon, couldn't you? So let me uh, around that. Does, yeah, hardware shop. Yeah, you would get it in a hardware shop, but they always, over here anyway, uh, they always charge more than anyone else. So, uh, yeah, DIY paint shops, all the all those kind of uh, trade paint shops uh, sell frog tape. It's good stuff. It does make a difference. Light colour tape from the art shop. Yeah, you see, my art shop, Evans, you know, so they sell that... that, that I don't know what kind of buff coloured stuff and it's like and that always did rip off the surface of the, uh, the paint to me so I prefer the painter and decorator stuff the, you know, the professional stuff it's better yeah. uh, does that help let me see if there's anything else um, yeah oh okay so there you go I'll put that up so because that, that's useful if you have an ASDA anywhere near you. We don't have ASDA over here, but uh, yeah, if you're in the UK or Northern Ireland, you know, they, they, they have that uh, for 450, that's, that's a good price. That's what I'm paying for the, um, the, the fake stuff <laughs> in, uh, in the pound shop. It's called Mr. Price. In fact, it's a good shop, you know, they sell lots of uh, stuff that's well worth buying. But anyway, so once again, uh, Oh, yes, while you're here, if you, if you have any suggestions for what I might do next week, um, uh, I'll do it, because that was Miles, that was your suggestion, if I can push that uh, that way. So, you know, that's, it's good to actually push, push myself, uh, you know, and uh, paint something like, like that. Just don't ask me to paint your pets. <laughs> I have a kind of a, a horror of painting um, you know, people's pets. So um, you're probably all disappointed now. Right? So uh, that's it. Um, I'll hide that on stream. And yeah, bloody hell, you're right, Ivor. Yes, Ivor says it's uh, frustrating to destroy the paper after the effort of painting on it. Yeah, yeah. And um, it's nothing to, um, I, when I was doing illustrations for the uh, Irish Times, uh, I sent an illustration in, and I used to hand paint these illustrations. And uh, I, because people, um, fewer people had scanners, you know, desktop scanners in those days, I had to send it in, and they would scan it on their um, their professional machine there. And uh, the editor took my illustration, and there was some decision made that they only had half the space for the illustration that uh, they thought they had, so he folded it in half. And uh, the scanner operator said, "You wouldn't do that if it was a." a you know, Picasso, and he says, I would if it had to go to print. <laughs> so I, I stopped sending them in and started scanning them myself and sending them in. Anyway, so that's it. Listen, have a, a great week and uh, enjoy your painting. And uh, yeah, paint with the wrong colours. It's, uh, it's fun. It's kind of hard to do when, when, you, when you first start, uh, but you kind of get used to it. The hard thing to, to get used to is not painting the right thing and then trying to do the, the right colour after you've painted it the wrong colour. And that means it's probably across the other side of the colour wheel and uh, it ends up looking like mud. 
So whatever color range you choose in that particular block, you kind of stay around it uh, either in that range or in the, uh, the adjacent colors, and then you won't get mud. Uh, Habakubism. <laughs> yeah, why not? So um, <laughs> that'd be funny. I don't, I'll have to study that. I'll be up all week sort of, uh, at night sort of looking at how the hell did they come up with that? Yeah, I'll have a go. I'll have a go. It might not work, though. I've never painted a cubist painting before. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I mean, it'd be a bit of fun. If, if you're prepared to uh, allow me to fail miserably at it, I'll, I'll do it. Yeah. OK. All right. Listen, great. Thanks for that uh, uh, project. And yeah, have a great week and I'll hope, I hope to see you next week. All right. And I, I hope to actually stick to the proper schedule. All right. All the best. Over and out. <laughs>